All right, so if you're not familiar with the seasonal cut, it is in the crucible format. And in the crucible format, each player chooses four decks. The requirements for the decks are that no deck can have 12 cards in common with any other deck. So they're all quite different. Now what you can do, though, is choose the same deck cover if you have the same card. Uh, so Sabo has Crystal Spice in every one of his decks. Different colors, but he always has red and blue because he always runs Crystal Spice. <laughs> Happy Joe, on the other hand, does not have any Crystal Spices. Um, lots of green-yellow. A little bit of green and a little bit of red. Yeah, so welcome to the Seasonal Cup. It'll be going on all day today. We run on a 10-minute delay uh, to protect the hands of our players, of our stream players. I can show the brackets after this match. This is the first round. All matches are best of five. Uh, both players chose to ban decks. Uh, Happy Joe chose one of the Crystal Spices to ban. It was just the straight-up red-blue deck. And uh, uh, Sabo banned the red deck for Happy Joe. And now they're selecting which deck to play. And Sabo's going to go for... I don't, know, I don't know what this is yet. It's blue, red, yellow. Heavy yellow versus green, yellow. Now this could be... This is probably green, yellow sack, maybe? Oh, 2.7 could be... Is it green, yellow rush? Oh my goodness, are we opening with green, yellow rush? Let me know if there are any problems on the stream, the audio levels, stream quality, all that. I'll be with you all day. You can talk to me in chat. I am Atmas on Discord as well. This is the culmination of three months. Uh, actually, it'll be October through December of 2019. The points all earned through then um, count for this tournament today. So players are seeded, seeded by the amount of points they had there. Superb Lizard was number one. Followed by, closely by, the True Quaz, I believe, who's also in this tournament. Hopefully we'll get to see them later. Okay, the game has begun. We do have Happy Joe here, uh, not with Green Yellow Rush. He is playing just Green Yellow Sack, which is quite different. Sabo, on the other hand, we know that he has Crystal Spice somewhere in there. Ooh, look at that. See that little recoil copter? He's very excited to be played. Okay, you know Smile's going to pull what out of his deck here? Windborne Emissaries and a Drakkar Sky Cannon. So this is a flyer. This is a an, an interesting flyer deck. Dreamkeeper and a flyer deck? And Crystal Spice? I'll bite. It's fine with me. I'm not going to argue. Doomgate. And Happy Joe's deck is always nice to see. He's going to Demon Wrangler the Village Elder over here to get a, a Flyer Harvester on the right side. So, Green Yellow Sack, if you're not familiar, is typically going to occupy this area. They're going to make lands here. And they're going to sit there until they get this guy out. And then this guy is going to go kill this thing. That's the enemy orb. Doomgate is out already. Up to five. Oh, I thought he put his flyer over here. Um, he must have... He must have killed that as well. Then put down... Another Harvester. It doesn't matter. He doesn't need a flyer there because he's just making land. He's making lands here anyway. Okay, yeah. He, he used his um, Demon Wrangler to make a flyer and then his Doomgate to kill the Demon Wrangler, Wrangler and then played another Village Elder. That mu must have been what happened. Rip all the dope fish for Sabo. Sabo's deck, definitely... It's unique, and therefore I like it. OK, 
Okay, stream once again is on a 10 minute delay. We have about two minutes to the actual stream starts. I'm just checking on the health of everything. I think everything's good. Okay. Shiny Assassin or Cone Shieldmate. Pretty, pretty standard uh, green yellow sack for Happy Joe. Doomgate sometimes is not always run. But these are all par for the course here. Green yellow sack, very, very strong. Always been very strong uh, from the very beginning of, of Feria. I can't remember a time when green yellow sack was not one of the best decks in the game. It's just, it's such a powerhouse. And it's difficult, it's difficult to beat. Um, when you're playing slow like this for Sabo, now, Sabo's deck is so unique I can't say what's going to happen, but because he has Crystal Spice, right? We know he has Crystal Spice. Um, so anything can happen there. But when you're sitting back and you're slow like this against what I would say is the most powerful slow deck, like the deck where if you just let it sit back long enough, it just wins and there's nothing you can do about it. It might be Green Yellow Sack. There's probably a couple of us that, are, that can compete with that. But... Yeah, playing slower than Green Yellow Sack, that's, that's a bold move. Um, there are interesting things like Rapala here. I wonder if he drops Rapala. Yeah, okay. Why not? Let's put a smile on that face. <laughs> so lots of Ruby Fish that Happy Joe could actually make use of. Um, that actually could be a big deal for him if he drops... Now he's, he's going to have to delay his Soul Eater. But he could make a lake and just start pumping out Ruby Fishes. Those are just as good as any unit for sacrificing. <laughs> In fact, that might help Happy Joe. All these Ruby Fish. Rapala, I don't know. Rapala, I don't think you're going to be helping your team as much as you think. Now, it's not a clear win to just start dropping lakes and playing Ruby Fish, of course, because he does need to get to three forest, three desert. Okay, the first Ruby Fish is out. Sorry, I was typing an announcement. Yeah, the stream is live. Make sure you let everybody know who was waiting to watch. The stream is now live. Ruby Fish is 2-2. That was from a Spirit of Rebirth. And yeah, he is electing to, to get the Ruby Fish out. It's going to delay the, the, uh, the Soul Eater, but there's really no... He's not under any pressure, right? These uh, Sky Captains out here... They're doing some work, but nothing compared to what Doomgate is doing. Like Doomgate is 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 a ticking time bomb right now. Soul Eater is in hand. It's only a six six right now, but that's only going to go up. Okay, there. I think he wanted this a little earlier. Yeah, my merchant. Um, really good with Rapala. So he's going to pick one of these cards to take. And he's going to give the other two to Happy Joe. But of course, Happy Joe's hand is just about full. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So only the Kadama goes. He's going to burn another card, Happy Joe. If he burns a Soul Eater, that's a big deal. Here comes Dream Keeper. He picked the Manta Rider out of that on my merchant. Dream Keeper shuffles those cards back in the deck, reduces their cost. Haunted Husk is perfect right now. Wow. Sabo is looking good right now. This is what he wants to be happening. He wanted this much earlier, of course, the Haunted Husk and the My Merchant. But, you know, you can always have the heart of the cards. There is the third Sky Captain. Wind Soldier is burnt. So, not too big of a loss for Happy Joe. But he is going to start pushing his hand out. He can Every turn, he can pump out a Ruby Fish. He 
He should be able to play. He can even, yeah, Feral Kodama is useful here. 5-5, five, five, it's a beefy jump. Maybe snipe a, snipe a Sky Captain, something like that. That's a difficult choice, though. You definitely want to start working toward the Soul Eaters. You are playing against an opponent who has potential removal. We know he has none in hand, but blue and yellow are what you want to look out for there with the Soul Eaters. So he goes to Two Lake. He actually made two lakes for his fish. Um, not making more forest or desert. Bone collector coming down, looks like. With another ruby fish. The ruby fish comes down for sure. There's no reason that doesn't come down. But he's deciding what to put down. Here it is, the bone collector. The 2-5 bone collector. And there is the third fish. And there's the first Crystal Spice. We knew this was in the deck. It was in all the deck covers for Sabo. Let's see what he gets. This can make a big difference. Okay. Well. Alright, so it was Mirror Phantasm, which is a, which is a big deal. And uh, here I guess, I mean, Gem Shell's not bad. Yak Attack is probably not going to do too much. Mirror Phantasm is a big deal uh, versus the Soul Eater. Now, he is already running blue, so that's something you'd play against anyway. But he's, he only has one of those. And uh, there is a Doomgate about to pop here soon. And one Soul Eater in hand. Third Sky Captain comes out. That's a big deal. That's a 6-6 six, six Rakoa Copter. Have you ever seen one of those? I haven't. And Haunted Husk doing its work. Happy Joe down to 18 health. Happy Joe's gonna... He's actually... You know, it's a little scary now. He doesn't know about the Mirror Phantasm. But he knows Crystal Spice was played, so that's always a little scary. There's no risk of a Meteor or anything. Because of, uh, Feria. The amount of Feria. And here he is. Big Daddy Ostrogoth. Man, it's so good to see him. Charge 13, just in case you don't have enough charge. He'll charge anywhere you want. All Feria Wells are empty. Don't forget about that effect. Just a big beast. Big beast of a flyer. Now, highly likely he gets Mirror Phantasmed. But that just means there's one less Mirror Phantasm for Soul Eater. Has he made his land yet this turn? No, he has not. So, Forest and Desert. Takes out one of the Sky Captains. Oh my goodness, a third lake. That really surprises me. Come on, Ostrogoth. Go, go, go. Okay. Takes out the uh, Dream Keeper there. Fortunately, the taunt kind of uh, made his options limited. Poor Ostrogoth. Garadan. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, okay, he can't Garadan. Oh, yes, he can, because he has Soul Pact. No, because he needs to plus one as well. Oh, one off from Garadan, really? There's no way to get another Feria? Oh, that hurts. If he were to Garadan, that would actually be devastating. Um, for everything but the Soul Eater, who would become huge. But that would wipe out most of his board. This would survive. The Bone Collector would be kind of big. This would survive. There would be so many... I think there would be, because of the Spirit Keeper here, there would be so many things that became huge. Okay, there's a Mirror Phantasm. We knew that was happening. 
MI Merchant trades out. Ostrogoth is gone, but he did his job. No, he baited out the Mirror Phantasm. That's not a cheap card. And uh, cleared the Dreamkeeper. You know, Garadan is out of range now. Sabo's drained in Feria. Happy Joe has a full board of just weenie creatures. Ghost Dragon. Really? Ghost Dragon. Okay. I really like this deck. Really unpredictable. I would have no idea that there would be Ghost Dragons in this deck. Makes sense. You got Sky Gardens. Okay, so this Feral Kodama is wild. So it could be played on this lake. This was from a uh, an MI merchant. These Deepwood Stalkers, however, are not wild. He still has not gone to three forests or three deserts. Soul Eater's up to 12-12. Okay, there is the third desert, finally. Um, I think Kodama's coming down. Because why not? Oh, he's going to stalk her. Clear out the rest of the captain. Still can Kodama. He can jump. You don't want to play him? He can jump. <laughs> no Kadama today. <laughs> Alright. Putting more units down. As sacrifice is wont to do. Uh, but more importantly, that gets him below the four card threshold. Which is important for Haunted Husk. And he has no ability to add a card to his opponent's hand. So... Well done by Happy Joe, that awareness. Keeping below four cards. This Bone Collector might be enough to win. Who needs a Soul Eater? He might save for Garadan. If, if, he, if he passes this turn, he is... Telegraphing his Garadan. Tough for Sabo right now. He was going he was going good for a while. He had the triple sky captain out. He just couldn't take advantage of it. Didn't find a way to use any of that momentum. No, he's not. <clears throat> he's not completely out of it. Okay. The second mountain here. He does have a 6-6 six, six for co-copter. So this is kind of telegraphing a Garadan. At this point, Happy Joe would be thinking, okay, Garadan. So to play against Garadan, you're going to want to surround your Bone Collector with as much stuff that's going to die. Uh... This one, I think, is doomed, unless you can sacrifice something this turn, which he has nothing to sacrifice in hand. Uh, you don't... You, there's really no risk of playing the Soul Eater this turn. <clears throat> It'll lose three health. But you'll miss out on so much beef if you do that. Does he need that beef, though, is the question. Um, because, you know, you know your opponent is running blue. He did play the Mirror Phantasm. It was a wild Mirror Phantasm, so... Um, you know, he didn't actually have to go to two lakes for that. He knows that there's one more card remaining from Crystal Spice. We know it's the Gemshell Tortoise. But Sabo's only at six Feria. So right now, this this looks like a Garadan. Uh, okay, so drops the Soul Eater. Like I said, it's not... It's going to lose a little bit of health. It's going... To not get all these buffs from these creatures that are about to die. But hey, your opponent's at 18 health. Do you really need, uh, you know, 20 something Soul Eater? Garadan still looks like it's 
fine to do. Like the the problem is he doesn't have, he does not have really a better option than just Garadan. Going to eleven, and there he is. And he is an eight eight Garadan, thanks to Sky Captains earlier on. Boom, 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 boom. Six six bone collector, fourteen eleven soul eater. Okay. Not much else you can do there. Haunted Husk does go off. Which is nice. <laughs> oh, the Soul Eater. I was like, what is that noise? It's Jackpot noise. The Soul Eater. The second Soul Eater. It's a 1919. Good thing those weren't burned earlier on when he was burning cards. Man, I don't think Feral Kodama is going to be played this game. That makes me sad. So, he can almost do anything he wants here. He could clear Garadan with an Aradrum Fanatic to move the Assassin up. Doesn't even need to use the Soul Eater for that. Uh, Soul Eater can then clear... Um, well, actually, can he make a Wind Soldier to clear the Sky Captain and then clear the Phantasm? Oh, yep. He, he doesn't even need to make a Desert because it can just play, be played here. Clear the Sky Captain. Soul Eater can come in. Oh, it's even a six. It wasn't even a six attack. Uh, Wind Soldier from the uh, from the Spirit guy that was here earlier. So the Soul Eater only has to take three damage. And there you go, fourteen damage, staring at face. You do have two Haunted Husks, which are going to heal you a little bit. Not anymore. Not anymore, actually, because there's only two cards in hand for your opponent. Ooh, Dreamkeeper is excited. Look at him. He calmed down just a bit. Okay, Dreamkeeper. We need a miracle. What are you giving us? What could you possibly give us that will turn this around? It has to be a Crystal Spice into... I have no idea. Oh, he has a Gagana in his deck. The Treasure Seeker. What an interesting deck by Sabo. I've never seen a deck like this. All right, so that is lethal on board multiple ways. 14 plus 6 is 20. 21 plus 0 is 21. There's some math for you. Ghost Dragon is 8-2. That's a really good Ghost Dragon. If he were in another position, this would be really good. I don't know why my cards are doing that today. You see that? Woo! Woo! They're excited. Excited. And, yep, sweeping it up. Happy Joe takes... Game one, well done. This is a best of five in Crucible format. Happy Joe is up 1-0. I will put the scores up, and we will ready up right now. <laughs> okay. How's that? All right, I'm going to pull away for just a moment as I type some announcements, get some more people in here. Happy Joe up 1-0. Sabo switching to red, yellow. Red, yellow of some kind. But we know there's a Crystal Spice in there. Don't forget about Crystal Spice. Okay, I'll be right back.
Okay, thank you for bearing with me there. I am back. Let's see what's going on here in this game. Happy Joe vs. Sabo. This is game two, of course. Crystal Spice is in this red-yellow burn deck, which is uh, funny. <laughs> Once again, Sabo running Crystal Spice on every one of his decks. Didn't work out so well for him last game. We'll see what it does this time versus green yellow sack again with the doom gate out early i like it this uh, background here is from gagana this is heartforge the land of the mecca you can see the train going around If you can hear it, but you can hear like mechanical sounds in the background. Flame burst taken out. Spirit keeper. Scourge flame is in hand and is playable next turn. Nineteen health left for Happy Joe. Of course, regular burn, really, really good against Sack. Sack has no way to heal usually, unless they tech in uh, Arunin's Guidance. So, really good counter pick here from Sabo. Gone are the days when people would run Blood Bloodsingers to counter Green Yellow Sack. But if you were to put that in your um, in your Crucible lineup, just to counter Green Yellow Sack, that might be worth it. It'll get you a win, for sure. But then probably a loss. Whereas Red Yellow Burn can get you a win, and then another win, and another win. Okay, here comes Scourge Flame. You can hit the orb here for five damage, or hit the Doom Gate here. Looks like he's going for the Doom Gate. It's perfectly fine. Uh, gets an extra Feria out of that. And actually pumps up his Feria to two, because I think he's setting up for Ground Shaker next turn into Cypher's Wrath to clear the Shaitan Assassin. And Happy Joe has to get something going here. Doomgate is now farther off, thanks to that hit from the Scourge Flame. You know, he could have done a little extra damage there, but it would have been at the cost of getting hit by the Shaden Assassin. So, overall, you're going to get more damage if you move off to the left here and just hit this free Doomgate over and over. The more this Doomgate is pumped, the more this Scourge Flame can hit for free. If you're just joining us, this is the Cypher Seasonal Cup. The quarterly championship. Inferia. Shaitan Assassin here, number two, coming out. Well, that's just better for that Ground Shaker. That's what the Ground Shaker wants to see. This is going to be rough. Seven Feria for Sabo. That's more than enough for Ground Shaker. It's enough to plus one and Cypher's Wrath to finish off either Assassin. Now the question after that becomes... Does Happy Joe... Well, does Sabo basically predict a movement trick here? So if he does, then you clearly clear out this Assassin. Otherwise, you can actually just sit here and hit the Doomgate again because... Well, no, no, you'd be you'd be dead to the Bone Collector. Okay, Crystal Spice, let's see what you get. Here's the lake. Okay, a Spirit Spice. Uh, <laughs> Apex Predator. 
an Ice Rock Behemoth. So interesting choices here. Apex Predator, really good against Sacrifice. Once the Soul Eaters come out, of course. What, or uh, Ostrogoth. We're a little bit away from that, though. Does pick it up, though, for later on. Okay. And that was a storm spawn for pick number two. Uh, I haven't seen anybody mention it yet. Let me know if the audio is okay. I'm scrolling up through chat. We are on a 10 minute delay, so I can't directly talk to you. But just give me a thumbs up if audio is good. Uh, and 10 minutes from the future now, me will read that message. Okay, so Apex Predator, like I said, good pick, but playable right now. Do you want to do you want to drop it now or do you want to wait? I certainly want to wait until you get a bigger target out there. A Scourge Flame, hitting the Doom Gate again. Thirteen health left for Happy Joe. It's tough versus burn. It's tough versus burn to the sack deck. Okay, so here's the movement trick. Uh, whether he predicted it or not, it happens. Still, though, down to 10 health. And that was just off one Scourge Flame Spectre. One Scourge Flame took him from... I think he started at 19 there, 19 or 18. But he's already at half health. Haunted Husk was doing work, but not anymore. Happy Joe's down to one card. Oh, two cards. Surrounding his Bone Collector with as much as he can. Time of Legends. What does he have in this deck? A Cypher? What could be the legend in Sabo's deck? Guess it in chat right now. Who can guess what the legend is? In Sabo's deck. We may know the answer this turn. There it is. The answer is. Oh, it's Rapala. <laughs> he just runs Rapala in every deck. That's right, that's right, that makes sense because he's running Haunted Husk in every deck. This guy, Sabo. Do every one of his decks have Amai Merchant, Rapala? And Haunted Husk and Crystal Spice? <laughs> is, that, is that the foundation? Uh, there is Rapala for a Haunted Husk. That's really nice. Gonna burn something. Ooh, what's he gonna burn? Uh, board is mostly cleared now for Happy Joe. And Bone Collector goes bye-bye. That hurts. You know what's really interesting is that Happy Joe was forced to make some planes here. Very rare to see that. For a sack deck. But here comes Ruby Fish. Lakes again for the sack deck. As you might expect. Such a standard play to put Ruby Fish in your sack deck. Another Haunted Husk? That's really nice. This Herald of War really hasn't seen a lot of war this game. Just sitting back harvesting. Apex Predator still in hand. 7-9 is not a bad target. Happy Joe... He doesn't have... He doesn't have any of his win conditions right now on hand. Bone Collector is the only thing keeping him alive right now. Needs to draw a Soul Eater and not have it burned. Doomgate is a few turns out. He's down to 6 health, 2 husks, 
are eating them alive every turn. And remember, this is at the end of the turn, so... Really, Sabo just needs to draw a Flame Burst, and he probably wins the game. Probably even Cypher's Wrath wins the game at this point. But Happy Joe's not going to give up. He is one of the best players in the game. Arguably the best, since he's won the past how many seasonal cups? But he does recognize defeat here, and he scoops it up. And that puts Sabo even with Happy Joe uh, in what is probably a very favored matchup for Burn. Okay. Well done. Bloop. 1-1. One, one. So what does Happy Joe counter the burn with? Looks like a green deck. Which is an excellent pick. Especially if it has healing. Oh, wow. So, such a deep green deck. Living Willow, Feed the Forest, Oakling. Yeah, there's some Healing Emperor's Command. Looking pretty good for Happy Joe. Looking pretty good. Yeah, let me let me check here. Let me be sure. <clears throat> I want to check Happy Joe's. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want to check Happy Joe's record here. Yep, he won the Ruin and Seasonal Cup, which was the last Seasonal Cup. And I believe... Fourth place in one of the Callum Seasonal Cups. And that's all I'm saying for Seasonal Cups. Of course, he wins tons of uh, other tournaments. But okay, I just wanted to check and uh, see what kind of streak he was on. Really a favored player today in today's tournament. Happy Joe. And look at this. Oakling and Willow out early versus Red Yellow Burn. It, can we even call it Red Yellow Burn? Is it Red Yellow Husk for Paula Burn? Slash Spice. Okay, Shade and Brute, we didn't see any of him last game. Tethra is here. And playable. Once again, you're not afraid of putting out big beefy things versus red-yellow. Of course, that is until a Crystal Spice comes out. Then he could be Mirror Phantasm. But that's not a concern right now. 6-12 for the Living Willow. That's a lot of health. Looks like um, maybe next game, or the game after, we can have another caster in here. I'll make it a little easier for me to do admin stuff. Summerflame. Summerflame can join us.
that'd be nice. All right, red yellow is sitting back here against this green deck. Just taking its time. Two heals in hand for Happy Joe. He's not afraid to really march up and start hitting these these burn units. Not a concern to him. He has enough stuff here to do some damage. And that's exactly where he's going. Tethra? Where's Tethra going to be positioned? You know, right here doesn't really do very much, so I might just want to follow the Willow here. Boar comes out. Boar's going to stay back and be the Harvester. Uh, I imagine. Maybe protect against uh, Surprise Scourge Flame. He's anticipating next turn there would be a Scourge Flame. We know there is none in hand. But Happy Joe certainly predicts there would be a Scourge Flame here. Boom, down. Hit the orb. That's why he wants the boar there. Well, really, I don't know. I mean, the Tethra is there as well. So he's covered in a lot of ways against the Scourge Flame. The worst, I think, though, would be a Scourge Flame hitting the Oakling. And he's really not protected against that. Like, if a Scourge Flame would be played here and hit this Oakling, there would be no way he could get over there. But there's none in hand, so it doesn't matter. Okay, 10 minutes in the past me asked a question about audio, and people are saying it's good. All right. Thank you, 10 minutes in the past stream watchers. If you are just joining us, this is the Cypher Seasonal Cup. Game one of the day. Well, match one of the day. This is game three. Tied up one-to-one -one in this best of five. Crucible format. There comes out a there comes a ground shaker, which can be quickly dispatched a number of ways. Deepwood Stalker here, not so useful. Probably want to see now you could use these Emperor's commands offensively here to lower the damage you're taking on your units. But versus burn, you're probably gonna want to save these for heals. Feed the forest comes out. And we get another Deepwood Stalker that's not really... Ooh, but it landed and made the other Deepwood Stalker a 7-9 thanks to that uh, Oakling buff. That's a 7-9 Deepwood Stalker. Yes, please. Um, can clear the board, first of all. Uh, which leaves Sabo with lots of fairy to spend, but really nothing to spend it on. Just removal. Flash Wind with nothing to spend it on. And the board is clear. Sabo has nine fairy. What does he draw? Ground Shaker. Okay. So Tethra can be cleared. Um, Boar can be cleared. He can do a lot of clearing here, but it's going to be expensive. Ground Shaker really helped him out with... Uh, he doesn't need it for Tethra, but it just puts things just a little bit closer to that threshold for Flame Burst or Double Ciphers. Not super ideal, though. Two Ground Shakers would be great right now. Two Ground Shakers would be just wonderful. You could clear Tethra and then next turn finish off whatever else is left. Haven't seen a Crystal Spice yet from Sabo this game. That could be what he needs. Okay, so Ground Shaker. Ooh, right in the Living Willow's face. That's brave. Cypher's Wrath for the Tethra. And does he do anything else? Nope. He had the option to stop a Fairy of Harvest here with a Flame Burst. But he might want to save these to actually win the game. To do orb damage. And, uh... Cypher's Wrath, he could have double ciphered to clear out one of these, but maybe he wants all the damage from Cypher's to go on the orb. Okay, 
Ooh, okay, using one of the Emperor's commands. It's going to let the Living Willow survive. He positions it. He, he could have gone and harvested there. But he positioned his creature in range of the orb to start doing damage and closing out the game. There is the first Scourge Flame Spectre. It can be played this turn if he makes a desert, which I think he's doing here. If he drops it here, moves down here, harvest two Feria. Ooh. No, that's a seven attack, Deepwood Stalker. You don't want to just throw away your Scourge Flame Spectre. So I don't think that's going to happen. <clears throat> Ooh, not a lot of great targets for Scourge Flame this game. Okay, he's going to Flash Wind him. All right, little Kamikaze Scourge Flame there. Cypher's Wrath onto the Living Willow. He's at six health, and Happy Joe just used his his other Emperor's command. So only one healing in hand right now. That's really dangerous. He has to clear off the Scourge Flame, so that's another, another three damage. That puts him at three, which means he has to heal. He goes to seven. There's two Flame Bursts in hand plus a Cypher's Wrath. If there's a Cypher's target, that's lethal for Sabo. Well, no, he won't have the Feria. In a couple turns, he would. Yeah, Cypher's Wrath right here and two Flame Bursts will be lethal after the heal. But Sabo doesn't have the Feria. He's got to wait. Grim Guard comes out. So what does he do? Does he telegraph? So here's the thing. Sabo doesn't know what is in Happy Joe's hand. He doesn't know if there's a heal or not. We know that he played one Emperor's Command. Well, Sabo knows that too. Uh, on the board. And the other to heal him. So there's probably a third in deck. Is it this card? Does he have Rudin's Guidance? Sabo doesn't know that. So we know that the correct thing to do is to just Flame Burst. And then, let's see, you'll go to four, and then you win the game next turn, right? With Flame Burst Cypher's Wrath? We know that's what you would do. Because, yeah, he would survive that long. But Sawa doesn't know that, and that's why he didn't just Flame Burst. He can just Grim Guard here, which is also two damage. <clears throat> it's, it's like playing a Cypher's, except um, he won't have lethal next turn. He can still survive another turn, so it's not bad. Still no healing in Happy Joe's hand, but Sabo doesn't know that. Sabo assumes that there might be healing. Triple Flame Burst. I think you just do it. Well, wait a minute though. 9, 14. Oh my goodness. This is so close. Happy Joe needs a buff to win the game. Happy Joe needs a buff to win the game, and Sabo just needs to Flame Burst and end turn. 14 damage on face next to Sabo. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe this is so close. Green versus Red Yellow Burn. Oh my goodness. What buffs does Happy Joe... I don't think we've seen any Elderwood Embraces. Or Rudin's Guidances. I don't know if he runs either. We've seen a Tethra. Man, does he run Tiki Caretaker? I doubt it. But he's 100% green, so... Okay, he's going to Cyphers. It's, it's, it's the same thing. Stops the Harvest. Grove Guardian. Oh my goodness. Happy Joe. If you wouldn't have... Oh, no! Oh, my goodness. Well, Sabo takes the his second game off Happy Joe. Wow. If Happy Joe would have saved that uh, that heal earlier on, of course it would be a different board. But he used that other Emperor's Command on the field instead of to heal himself. And there you go. Sabo takes advantage. Hmm, I lost connection there briefly. Sabo up 2-1. Can you believe it? Okay. Let's move on to game... Four? Are we already on game four? Oh my goodness. Shoop. One more to win it for Sabo. Beating Happy Joe, the previous, the champion of the previous seasonal cup. Happy Joe. Can Sabo do it? Red, yellow, burn. Happy Joe had the counter pick that turn. 
or that game. He counterpicked his green deck against this red yellow burn deck, and you would think that would be good. He had healing. He had the beef. It was not enough. No crystal spices even came out. It wasn't even a factor. There were no Rapalas. Filling his hand with fish. Maybe that's why Saba won. <laughs> okay. But now Happy Joe is uh, switching to her Cohen's. Very strong deck all around. Water Elemental in this Rakoan deck. Oh, it seems like Moobot isn't working. There is a bracket link in the stream title, but I'll fix Moobot. Oh, let me see if I can fix him right now. Okay, I think it should be working now. There we go. Okay, Herald of War. Herald of War are basically the harvesters of Sabo's deck. <laughs> All they do is hang back and harvest. Answer in hand for Happy Joe, gift of the Rakoa. Man, Rakoans are scary to play against. Oh, he is going to war this time. Grim Guard in the back. Shout out to 10 minutes in the past chat. You guys are great. Even though you're 10 minutes in the past and the future, let me tell you, the future is amazing. You can't, you won't believe what it's like here. We're watching Rakoans. You guys are probably still watching Burn right now. I'm watching Rakoans. Well, I mean, you're still watching Burn, but you're watching Green. Yeah, Green is so 10 minutes ago. So as powerful as Rakoans are, they aren't super simple to play. You're basically thinking about two things the entire time. Or at least when I play them, I are. I am. Gift of the Rakoa and your champion. And there's the gift. That's a 7-7 seven, seven water elemental. You really don't want to see that very often. Herald of War is gone. Which does mean that the Sheet and Brute will be buffed when it's played. It'll be a 4-7. Thanks to the combat effect. But hey, look, this is a 7 attack water elemental, and he only has a Cypher's Wrath. He doesn't have a Flame Burst. Haunted Husk making his appearance as he does in every game for Sabo. Tough spot for Sabo. It might he might just have to play the Sheetum. Trade with this four cost water mental who's gotten so much value. Well, it's really not four cost, it really has a gift of the Rakoa on it, so. But a good value elemental. Haunted Husk not gonna do anything for you right now. Okay, you're running into it with the Cypher's Wrath, then playing the Sheet and Brute, so... What what did it take to take out that Elemental? Cypher's Wrath, Grimguard, and what did he kill here? I forget what it was. Oh, Herald of War. Yeah, pretty sure that was a value Elemental. But, 
what else can you do? Uh, now, Asabo has a presence on board that Happy Joe can't deal with. Aurora comes out, but Aurora's not enough for 7 health. He could use Frog Tosser this turn. Uh, it would clear out the Recruiter and the and the Brute and the Frog Tosser, but he'd be left with a frog. He could just Aurora. Oh, he's not going to do anything. I was going to say, he could just Aurora to chip the Brute down, but it looks like he's not going to worry about it. it looks like he's going to let him hit the Shield Mates with the Brute. Baiting out the hit there. Leaving him with a 1-1 one, one Rakoa, and then Aurora on the 1-1. One, one. But there's a Cypher's Wrath. Yep, using the Cypher's Wrath, so... Now the 1-1 one, one is gone as well, but... Aurora still could be played. Ooh, Aurora's creation as well. It's just now the Aurora gets less value because it would be buffing a 3-4 instead of a 1-1. One, one. So Sabo did the right thing there. I would love some tea, Aurora. I've been drinking a lot of tea lately, actually. Uh, with some honey in it. I got a lot of honey for Christmas. There's a duplication of the Aurora into the 6-6 Aurora. Somebody got me one of those honey twisters. Like you... Because if you use honey a lot, you know. When you spoon it out of the, of the glass, it's just going to get everywhere. So what you do is you get those little honey twisters... You, you wrap the honey around it, and it comes out easily. You don't spill any honey. I don't know what the name for them is. I call them honey twisters. It's changed my life. It's a little piece of wood. Okay. So, yes, I would love some tea. Scourge Flame Spectre. In hand for Sabo. That's been his game-winning card. Every game with this burn deck so far. Can't quite play it yet. Okay. Pressure is on. Eight to face is coming. There is a Grim Guard, though. Do you bust out the Scourge Flame? Drop a Mountain right here. Dash over, do five damage. Your opponent isn't going to heal. Oh my goodness, if you just do that, Happy Joe has no way to remove the Scourge Flame without taking another 3 damage, and then Flame Burst wins the game. I think Sabo is beating Happy Joe in round 1. Wait a minute. Is this the same thing? Is this the same result? He must be afraid of healing. Because I was a, f unless I'm missing something, he must be afraid of losing. Because if, actually, I don't know, what is he afraid of? What are you afraid of, Sabo? Oh, 
Oh no. Oh no, Happy Joe. Okay. So because Sabo didn't Scourge Flame last turn, Happy Joe has a chance here. I think Scourge Flame was just a straight out win. But Sabo could be thinking of something, uh, some other line of play that I'm not. Eight health now for Happy Joe. Does he just win next turn with Scourge Flame, Flame Burst? He doesn't have the. F he goes to eight, nine. Oh, he has Flash Wind. Oh, he wins. He wins next turn anyway. Because Scourge Flame. Oh, he was thinking of this the entire time after he got the Flash Wind. Scourge Flame goes down here. Flash Wind. Boom. He has the Feria for Flame Burst 2. Sabo beats Happy Joe. I cannot believe it. Wow. I think he does, at least. Right? Did I do that math? Yeah. Five damage plus three. That's ten Feria. He gets two from uh, the Flame Burst. That was my Slack notification. Sorry, guys. I thought I had this turned off. Um, but that was me, not you. I apologize. I might close Slack here so that doesn't happen again. Do do do. Oh, sorry, that was me again. Okay, I'm closing it. It's closed. It won't happen again. Jean-Michel. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think Sabo just wins. Am I missing something? Am I missing something obvious? He did this for this purpose, right? I'm I'm very confused. Maybe it's just a mistake. Maybe a misplay. I'm always reluctant to call something a misplay because it's so easy for me to miss something that I that I don't understand. But I thought that was pretty clear. Okay, Happy Joe. You have another chance here. Aurora's creation is drawn. Uh, it's not enough to win this turn, and unfortunately he needs he needs to heal this turn. Or he just loses to a Scourge Flame if Sabo sees it. Since he can't win in one turn, he can win in two turns. That's doable. Nobody has a problem with that. The problem is he has no way to heal his orb. And I don't think... I just don't think there's any healing in his deck. Otherwise, he would be drawing. He would be drawing for it right now. Because he can see there's a Scourge Flame playable. And with, with Flash Wind... You can't block the Scourge Flame on your orb unless you put something here, but he wasn't able to. There's a Grim Guard. Does Sabo see it? I mean, I see lethal. Another flame burst. I mean, this is lethal, right? Am I am I out of my mind? Okay, here's the scourge flame. Oh, charge two. Okay, so I was out of my mind. I was thinking charge three for scourge flame. Okay, so that's why I say there is not a. I, I was thinking that there was charge three, and you could go down here. It used to be charge three, right? All right. Riddle solved. Whew, I was like, man. Okay, so actually, oh, this is so close. <laughs> okay, Happy Joe wins, right? Well played. Happy Joe wins. Wow. Okay. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that makes sense now. Scourge Flame is charged to, therefore, no lethal. I feel like he could have done that, though. Couldn't he have made another land? Like, didn't he already set up the land, and then he could have just made another land? I don't know. I have to go back and watch that. Wasn't there lethal? If you, I don't know. Maybe there wasn't. Okay, 2-2. Two, two. Doesn't matter. Last game of the match. We are all tied up. It's going to be uh, Happy Joe's Rakoans versus Sabo's... What do you want to call it? Crystal Spice, Rapala, Husk, Rainbow... <laughs> Alright, 
we're gonna even out the scores here. And bloop, two two. These are best of five. So this is the first game. This is really good. It's a really good one. Sorry for my typing. <laughs> All right. Ulani. Okay, so Rakoans. Rakoan versus Rakoans, except one of the Crowans. Oops, sorry. One of the Rakoans has Crystal Spice and Husk. And Rapala. I can only assume Husk and Rapala are in Sabo's deck. Okay, so let's see who has the superior Cohen's. Oh, it's important to note that there are Swarming Crassius in Happiest deck. That's certainly important to keep in mind. And there are Aurora's Creation in Happy Joe's deck. So is it proper to call it a Rakoan deck, or is it proper to call it a Crassius deck? Rakoagassius? Rakassius deck? Man, these games have been so good. And you know what? It, you know why it's been good. I have to say, it's the, we owe it all to Sabo, Sabo and his decks, because they're so unpredictable. Okay, we got War Machines, we got Cannoneers, lots of Rakoan, good Rakoan stuff. Crystal Flower is excited to be played. Look at it, look how excited it is. Oh, it just came right out, it was so excited. Swallows a Karasius, get in there. Get in there, you three cost fish. What are you doing? Cannoneer can come out, hit this 2-2, two -two, turn it into a 1-1. One -one. There it goes. Oh my goodness. That's not right. Okay, bear with me. <laughs> there was a problem. Okay. We're coming back, don't worry. We'll jump right back into the game. Here we go. You saw nothing. And look at Heartforge. Look at the volcano. Happy Joe. Look at Sabo. That doesn't say my name anymore. We fixed that bug. And shoop. We're back. Cannoneer came out and he did hit the Rakoan and the other Rakoan. What happened after that? Emperor's Command came out. Did he really use Emperor's Command to clear out the 1 1? And then Curious Biomancer came out. And he drew another Carassius. This Carassius is still in Fish Prison. Fish Prison is the worst place to be. War Machine. Swallowing a little baby Rakoan. Actually, it's not... So, you know, thematically, the Rakoan is piloting the War Machine, right? Like, the War Machine isn't swallowing it. It doesn't have a mouth. He's, he's piloting it, right? You guys get that. Radiance in Happy Joe's deck. Oh, he had Radiance last game. I mean, he it was in his deck last game versus the burn deck. He really wanted that, didn't he? 
Oh my goodness. He didn't draw for it. Well, that's my whole thinking of that game is, is messed up now because I was thinking there was lethal. Maybe there still was. I don't know. Now I want to watch the replay to see. <clears throat> but anyway. Nice healing there. Okay, Aurora to make a 6-6 six, six shield mates, which trade off. Now, here's the question. Does Happy Joe Aurora the Aurora, or does he save it? Okay, he does. The other option there, of course, was saving it for Carassius, but maybe he's abandoning that line of play. Would you like some tea? Because he had such a slow start with it. With one of them being in fish prison. That would be a really slow play to hold on to that creation until... You'd have to wait till either... Oh, there are four costs. I think I said there are three costs earlier. Um, you'd have to wait until this guy gets out of prison, or you play another Swarm of Crassius, and then you play a Warrior's Creation. So, can you wait that long, is the question. Happy Joe said no. He's just going to go for the tempo now. Okay, I'm looking at 10 minutes in the past. People are saying math is wrong. He cannot, yeah, he cannot charge the, okay. So there must have not been lethal, which makes me feel better, okay. It makes me feel better about the matchup. Hmm. I don't know. Should he have saved it for the Crassius? That's a hard call. I don't think I can make that call. I think the call I would make is just... is the brainless one, which is keep it for your Crassius. Because if you get your Crassius going, you you can't lose versus this Rakoan deck, right? Oh, you can because there's there's Crystal Spice and Rapala's probably, you would imagine. You know there's Crystal Spice because he showed it. Clearing out the weenies there, but a 6-6 six, six Rakoan is still left. And this Rakoan War Machine does not swallow Ulani. Which is surprising to me. Had he swallowed Ulani, it clears the 6-6 six, six in one hit. Garadan is in Sabo's hand, don't forget. Yeah, two Carassius now. That means all three will be able to be on board. The problem is because this prison really makes it awkward. Does he hit the prison? No, he doesn't. But this prison makes it awkward because you don't want this to come out. Like, you don't want to play a Carassius and then this comes out. That's lost value. So actually, prisoning the Crassius is a—it's really interesting play. Oh, now people are saying there was a mislead. Okay, so the, so I was wrong in the first turn. I was wrong in the first turn. Uh, there was no lethal, but then there was, and then he missed that one. Is that what happened? Okay, I really got to watch that again. That's all I want. I want to stop casting. I want to go watch that last game. Can I do that? Am I allowed? Jump show? I'm just kidding. Okay. Happy Joe with a dominating presence on board. Sabo with six feria. That was my Zelda sound. God, I'm just what? A, what a professional cast today! Just all my alerts are going off. Okay, finally released from prison is the Swarm of Crassius. Gift of Rakoa. Wow, on the frog. Okay, putting pressure on. 
See, me, I would have saved that. I would have saved that till I had more Karasiuses out. Okay, there was a Crystal Spice played. Mirror Phantasm. Illusion of Grandeur not going to do much for you, but Mirror Phantasm. And Windfall are nice. Picks the Windfall. There's a Spirit Spice and a Storm Spawn. Either of those are okay. Picks the Spirit Spice. And Windfall is just a couple extra Feria for you. But the Spirit Spice is tricky. However... You need creatures on the board for a Spirit Spice to be really good. And Sabo happens to have none until Garadun comes out, which leaves a 2-6. I'm sorry, 2-3. Two, 2 Fairy left. Now this means Karasius can finally be played, but there, it's missing the creation that he had earlier, so he's not going to be able to go ham on these. It's going to be pretty, pretty beefy, though. Pretty beefy amount of Karasius. Karasii? Karasi? So the question is, what do you do with the frog? Hitting face is no longer something you want to do, but you could clear the shield mates. You could harvest. You can clear the shield mates and harvest. I think that's what he's opting to do. Now, this is interesting because... And here comes the Karasius. What this does is it... Well, no, it's not going to matter. I think. I was going to say it keeps the Garadan here. Wait, what? Oh, that was a display bug. Oh, he saw it. Okay. So I was wondering why it was two attack. I'm like, what did he... What did? How did he lower the... How did he lower the attack on the frog? He didn't. It was a 6-6 six, six frog still. It was just bugged for the spectator. It just cleared Garadan. Okay. Okay, that's what happened there. There's a little spectating bug. So Garadun's gone. Obviously, yeah, you would just clear the Garadun. There's two Swarming Karasius. And the third card is in hand for Karasius. I think he's only used one creation. So ideally, you don't want to play the third Karasius until you have creation in hand so you guarantee you don't lose your Karasius. But he just played Garadan, so are you really that worried about it? Rokoacopter is really nice. And this is another risk, too, if you play your other Karasius and he pulls out a Rokoacopter. You know, you're playing against Rokoans. You lose all your Karasius, you can't creation it. That's one of your win conditions. I mean, your other win conditions, I guess, Radiance is not a bad one. Kind of, maybe, sort of. Uh, I haven't seen a champion in his deck yet, so I don't think they're even in here. I think he's focused more on the Karasius style stuff. How are you going to make room for all this and champions? <laughs> Water Elemental. Like, these are Cohen decks are getting so refined. I mean, is it a Rakoan deck or a creation deck? Yeah. It's a cool deck. That's what I'll call it. I guess if it doesn't have champion, it would be a creation deck, right? I gotta type a fail fish to. Oh, I even failed the fail fish. Ten minutes in the future, me failed the fail fish. I'm not even gonna correct that. I'm not even gonna correct that fail fish. <laughs> Alright, I need to stop reading chat. It's too funny. Okay, so we did play the fourth Crassius. Now, Rococopter is not a concern here. Obviously, 
Garadan's been played. So what is the risk? Well, Crystal Spice into Garadan plus six Feria. That's a risk, technically. But, I mean, it, it, is it a risk? Is he really concerned? He needs his creation. Basically, that's what I'm talking about. Is he going to draw his creation before all the Crassies are gone? Because that's how you get the true value from them. But we know one creation was used. There are... Um, I actually can't see how many cards left in the deck due to my setup. How many cards are there? Ah, uh, i got to move my screen. Ah, uh, I can't see it. There are a certain number of cards down here that you guys can see that I can't. Oh, I know what I can do to see it. Oh, but it's so tiny. Fifteen. Fifteen cards left. So two of those are creations, I think. Okay. No uh, no creations and no gift of the Rakoa. There are there is a frog tosser though, which is really nice versus things like Rakoa copters. I don't, I don't see a reason not to frog tosser, unless you're saving it for. I don't know what would you be saving it for. Your frog tosser lives. There's a frog over here to hit the shield mates. Shield mates has to choose to hit a Carassius or a frog. He has the lands for it. Two two two. Two three one. Oh yeah, you can even just use the Crassius yourself, why not? There's a Frog Tosser, okay. Alright, looking good. The only thing he's missing is a Gift of the Rakoa. But, I mean, does he need it? Okay, so Rakoa Copter is the most... Ooh, look how excited it is. Oh, it's so excited it's coming out. Because all it needs to do is go here and move up. But I mean, that's not, that's just two creatures. There's still a lot left. Oh, get me out of there. Oh, get me in there. Get me in there. Put me in the game. Put me in the game, coach. Oh, I'm so excited. What a great display today. <laughs> hey, look at this. Oh, boy. That's a new one. I haven't seen that one before. I hope we don't get motion sick. Okay. There's the helicopter. Made a lake over there. Which allows him to illusionist onto the other cone and pop that Carassius. Nice. Okay. There's a board. Sabo has a board. Destructive Volley from Happy Joe. This card doesn't see enough love, I think. I mean, right now it removes a Rokocopter. But, you know, it can do more than that. That's still fine. Three for three. Well, for five, technically, but three health. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> oh, Fuguru, okay. Can't quite play it. But now he knows he has it. And... Plop. Okay, Champion's in Sabo's deck. So, yeah, we can call his deck a Rekko on deck. Yeah, there's already another one, so he has two in hand. Uh, he has three Rekkoans out, right? Yep. 
and seven Feria. He could play one other Bracoan before a champion, but he has to sacrifice if he plays the Canary. No, you may, so he could technically. Eh. But if you're going to get a champion out, is there a better time than now? What better place than here? A better time than now? There he is. And War Machine to swallow the 1-1, one, one, which makes it a 6-4. That's nice. Okay, 7 damage pressuring face for the first time. This game for Sabo. How are our timers looking? Oh my goodness. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Timer, timer, timer. Sabo's going to lose by time. He's taking too long. 40 seconds left. He has to do 20 health of damage. 40 second play timer. If you lose your time bank, you lose. Happy Joe has four minutes left. Sabo has 40. Wow, wow, wow. Does Sabo see this? If he plays slow, he does not see this. You have to pay attention to your timers. Sabo doesn't play a lot of tournaments. Definitely not a lot of seasonal cups. Oh my goodness, so many Rakoans on board here. Just blocking the orb. Sabo, you have 40 seconds of playtime. 39, 38. You guys can count backwards. Oh, you gotta, he doesn't see it. He doesn't see it. Oh, Sabo. Oh, Sabo. No. Oh, he's not going to be happy. He's not going to be happy. There are time banks. There are time banks. You got to play fast. Got to go fast. Sabo loses against the previous champion of the Seasonal Cup. Happy Joe. Cannot be defeated. Wow. I have to, I have to imagine that Sabo didn't know that.